we're in a very interesting time period, man, in Q3 2022, where there's been a mass consolidation of the online platforms for trading card game secondary market. You had TCG player purchasing channel Fireball recently, and then just the other day, eBay purchases TCG player. So the whole market share used to be this nice little pie graph, and now the pie graph is like one red dot with like a really tiny sliver, man. It has really been consolidated, and I want to talk about it. I want to talk about each of these uh, acquisitions, really from my point of view, what I see. And all in all, man, to, to summarize what a lot of people are, you know, parroting out there is that, yes... The monopoly equals bad, you know, we've all played the fucking game, we've all been on the board, and then some guy gets all three colors of whatever, and he builds his hotels, and then he screws everyone up and just kicks them out of the game. We've all been there, we, we've all seen that story play out, we all know how that is. It's bad for the consumers, it's bad for the stores, the local game stores, at, at all, all the above. It's not good when the market share of any industry out there is a monopolistic, okay? So, you know, getting past that, I first want to talk about, like, the history of these certain, uh, you know, entities and kind of explain more of the acquisitions. And then I want to go into, really, the theories at the end. And, again, I I'm just a normal guy in a normal room. I commend anyone who made a, a, a lot of money selling off their company or anything, you know, that that's great, man. I, I, I wish I was that smart and intelligent to do that kind of stuff. I'm just, you know, commentating on this as a normal guy in a normal room and a very big enthusiast in the industry. So, first off, CFB. Wow. So, CFB is a story of a man who's just been kicked in the balls way too much. I mean, you know, they started around the same time TCG Player did. And from my Google <laughs> research uh, 10 minutes ago. And all in all, I think that in recent years, in the last five years, they've realized that their business model is just not good. And it's not as good as TCG Player. I think that they realize that just selling singles out there in the market for Magic the Gathering just isn't profitable. They can't make money off of that uh, space anymore. Whereas in previous years, they had when they first started up. You know, they, they had a huge market, uh, they had a huge supply of singles out there. And, I, you know, I purchased from them back in the day with Magic the Gathering. Uh, they had a large amount of quantities of certain cards. I was surprised. And, uh, you know, uh, I think it was uh, around two or three years ago, they just stopped. And the reason why is because TCG player just kept kicking them in the balls. You know, they, they grabbed more of the market share from them and they did it in a more affordable way. Because TCG player levies all the labor and the bullshit of like handling the cards, mailing them and shipping onto you, the customer or the store or the seller. They don't deal with that. And CFB's model was different. You know, that they would do it all in-house, and it just wasn't profitable. And I can, I, I am assuming that because they stopped selling singles, you know. So, I, I don't think businesses would normally stop doing what is profitable. So, we can assume uh, on the public is that their business model just wasn't working anymore three years ago. Now, another thing is in 2020, uh, Watsi kicked them in the balls pretty hard. I mean, going direct to Amazon and circumventing them around, like, that really was a huge profit loss, I think, to them. And they realized, oh shit, <laughs> like, what are we doing here? We are not getting as much revenue as we used to, and really these products are going direct to consumer. I mean, you had all these secret layers popping up. They, they, they saw the writing on the wall. They, they were fearing of Windows. They knew that they had to do something different because, you know, just doing the business model that they had in the past with the single sales and, you know, other things just wasn't working out. So I think that they really tried to pivot and do the binder POS, which is the software as a service type of, you know, listing cards and, and stores can list cards on, on their database and it syncs up into their, you know, uh, different inventory systems in the local game stores. You know, my, my personal opinion on that is I think that it is an interesting software and, and definitely can be utilized in the future, but I, I don't think it's as good as people say. You know, from a couple different sources, I've heard it, you know, it's good, but it has its like little glitches and little, little weird things. But overall, I just don't think that it is as good as 
people really have a perception out there. And my, my main reasoning for thinking that is, you know, uh, CFB had purchased uh, POS for a good amount of time, you know, Binder POS, and uh, they, they couldn't make it more profitable than TCG Player. It just wasn't lighting, it wasn't burning. I would think that if the software was as robust and as good as they said it was for as like a software as a service, like transactional prep platform, I would think that it would have done better and, and out-competed TCG Player, but it really didn't. So it kind of makes me wonder like what's gonna happen to that whole um, thing in the future and if it's really gonna be utilized in different platforms after all these acquisitions. So I think that it really was the CFB's whole story in the last five years especially is they just kept getting pounded in the nutsack. You know, first you had, you know, a TCG player just out competing them and making more revenue or making more revenue, but also net income because they didn't have as much expenses. They didn't incur as much labor fees. They could as much as, you know, Channel Fireball, they could compete at a better playing field. So they realized that and, you know, they, they stopped selling singles. Also, uh, they just really got kicked in the nuts with Watsi just going like circumventing them right to Amazon and just direct to consumer. So they realized that th their big profit centers in the past weren't working. And uh, another thing to note is, you know, they really backed flesh and blood early in its life cycle. And, you know, MetaZoo and a couple other Kickstarters now, um, they made a lot of money off of Flesh and Blood. And I think that the reason why, uh, the, the reason why they looked at other different TCGs out there in, in the industry, and if you look at, I think, their uh, CSL website, you see a bunch of other, you know, Kickstarters and stuff, is because they made out like a bandit with Fab. So I think that, you know, that kind of spurred it, and they were just looking for different, um, you know, things. And I think... From an outsider looking in at their business model and what they were doing as a business, just solely just looking at a, at a business point of view, I think that they were trying to pivot as best as they could. And I do I do uh, commend them for it because a lot of companies, what they do is they're like, no, let's keep doing the same thing we've done for 20 years. And then they just, yeah, just explode. Really, if you look at from just a business standpoint, they were really smart. And in the last year or a year and a half, I think that they've been really dressing themselves up and looking very sexy for an acquisition. And I think that, you know, going on into TCG players motive for purchasing Channel Fireball, honestly, I think that CFB was like, look, we're, we're, we're selling to the highest bidder here. Well, I think that they drummed up different, you know, offers out there in the, in the medium just to kind of scare T C TCG player and TCG player was probably like, ah, oh, fuck, we don't want some hot shot hippie, you know, like, you know, tech person, right? Coming in, buying CFB and then just gutting it, revamping it and making it actually better than TCG player. I think that they thought, Hey, let's just shoot the cow and just get this over with, you know, just, just shoot it in the head, make it dead just buy them out and then own the market and just, you know, you take the pill and, and let it go, right? Not risk it and just let them be bought out by someone else and them revamping it and actually making the changes that are needed to be more competitive than TCG player. So, you know, all in all, I think that that is really kind of the motive behind why they purchased them. Also, they could be trying to look sexy as well. I mean, I think that moving on to TCG player, right? I think after they bought Channel Fireball, they realized, wait a minute, this is the height of how much market share we will ever have in the trading card game industry. Like, there's probably no other time that they would have as much market share as they did now. Like, you know, Channel Fireball, you know, what's next? Are they are they going to acquire the, the small ones here and there? Like, I think that the the whole aspect of their situation was really good. And overall, I think that, you know, they also didn't want to be kicked in the balls as well. I think they really did look at Channel Fireball and say, hey, you know, <laughs> that could be us. That could be us putting ice on our nutsack, trying to like, you know, ease the pain from some other person coming out of nowhere and just saying, hey, I'm going to do what TCG player does, but I'm going to have less fees and less overhead and less employees. I think that, 
you know, they, they were fearful of that. And we've seen different platforms come up recently, like Whatnot. I, I don't think Whatnot is any type of competitor to TCG Player, but, but it's just a, a prime example of just some random platform just coming out of nowhere and actually growing. It's like a weeds growing everywhere. So I think that they were, you know, cautious on that st standpoint as well and saying, hey, like, we're kind of the big dogs now. We have a, probably the biggest market share we're ever going to have. You know, might as well like package this up and try to sell out. And may maybe they even had deals uh, in the in the, uh, the past with eBay, and they've been negotiating pr prior to this and had this in in like writing where like, hey, if if you uh, buy Channel Fireball, get them out of the picture, then you know, let's talk. Who knows what, what goes on in the background? I I don't want to speculate too much on that point. But uh, yeah, no, I think it was, you know, really smart of them to just sell out at a good point in time. Um, the, the market's down overall, like with the trading card games and collectible space. So that, that's kind of a, a net loss. But if you just look at market share overall, I think they have a really good suite of platforms that they could have, you know, made to look sexy for eBay. Now, eBay. Why did they purchase TCG Player? You know, eBay, of, of course, is a much larger corporation than uh, TCG Player. I think ultimately it really comes down to a couple factors. So when I did my research 15 minutes ago now on eBay and I said, hey, how good is eBay doing? I saw a lot of people saying like their sales are down uh, like four quarters in a row or, or four months or eight months in a row, something like that. So people were worried about their sales. So I think that this is a really good opportunity to, for eBay literally just to buy revenue and buy sales. Because basically TCG Player has a lot of sales, right? So if eBay just buys them and pays $294 million for TCG Player, they literally like lose cash, but they don't really lose cash. They really like gain a bunch of debt, right? But they also gain a lot of revenue. So in Q4 2022, you can be like, hey, look, guys, we increased our sales. We increased our revenue. And I don't know how big of an impact that will be, especially with eBay's platform of, you know, a bunch of stuff. But it, it, it's definitely going to it's definitely going to help. You know, you, you can't uh, argue that it's not, it's not going to help. It's it's definitely a big industry. And there's there's a lot of transactions that occur on TCG player, man. So I think this was a really big play in the short run for eBay to really just buy revenue and buy income, right? To make their balance or their, their income statements and, and what have you have better revenue for, you know, what performance indicators are out there. You know, it seems from my research on Google, they really care about sales and revenue. That That's big um, in, you know, the people investing in them, understanding, okay, you know, here's where your performance is and hey, you're lagging. This is going to, you know, help with that type of uh, thing. Also, I think debt overall is pretty uh, cheap. When you when you have an inflationary period like we're in now, uh, where <laughs> the inflation is much larger than everyone wants to believe, and, uh, you know, inflation is just going to make debt a lot, you know, not as bad, I think it's a really good opportunity there. Also, I think... In future periods, like in 2023, 2024, when eBay is more profitable, this will be a great opportunity to reduce their tax burden. So you have uh, TCG Player being bought out for $295 million from what I read, right? Uh, if you don't know what goodwill is, it's something where when an acquiring company like eBay buys TCG Player for $295 million, there's gonna be a, a goodwill associated with that purchase. So goodwill is anything in excess of what's on the balance sheet of a company. So a balance sheet is really just like all the shit they own. So uh, it, take it from me, Bronson, my, my balance sheet. If, if this right here was all, all, the only flesh and blood I owned and all, all the only assets I owned, you know, what, what would you have guys? $3,000 worth of product here, maybe 4,000. So $4,000 would be on the balance sheet. But let's say somebody bought me out for $6,000. What would happen is they would put on their books, okay, $4,000 of Bronson's inventory plus two million, or, or no, $4,000 of Bronson's inventory and $2,000 of goodwill that you pay in excess for 
Bronson's inventory. Same with TCG player. And this is just made up numbers from the goodwill standpoint, but to put it in the sense of this transaction, eBay purchases TCG player for 295 million and you know 200 million could have been what their assets were and everything that TCG player owned and 95 million was the goodwill. And what you can do with goodwill is it's on the balance sheet, I believe, you can reduce the amount of taxable uh, revenue that you have in future periods because it doesn't really amortize. You can just take it in certain periods that you want. So I definitely think that that is going to be used in the future to um, reduce um, tax burden. But overall, I think that uh, the main purpose of buying uh, TCG player is just to buy buying revenue, honestly. I, th I think that's what they're doing, buying revenue and sales. And honestly, if you think about the, all the market share out there for the trading card game industry, I mean, the biggest one is TCG player. Second is probably eBay, right, man? Like, and, and Channel Fireball is, is, you know, close behind that in the top five, top ten. So they, they, they pretty much own, the, uh, you know, a huge portion of the industry now, no matter where you're going. So really, they have all uh, three board places on the Monopoly board. So, you know, of course, they can increase... Uh, rent at those spaces on the board. It, it is just what it is. And it, it really just circles back to the thing I said at the beginning. Obviously, Monopoly is bad, you know? And I know a lot of people are saying that. Now, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, that's to summarize. But I think that you're also, you know, let, let's, you know, go over to my theories. I think that because of this whole event and because of everything, you know, eBay and TCG Player, CFB, they've got to be really careful about raising their price or just pissing off the consumers or or, or doing a thing where they, they make the market want another platform. Because I think this is an opportune time for another hotshot group of people, just, you know, 10 people in a, in a house of, you know, people who could just create a website and, and build out a platform and, and know their shit, like to really just compete in the industry and the crazy thing is they don't even have to do it to actually do anything you know they don't even have to have large aspirations to take tcg player out or ebay out they could just want to start up for you know uh, i don't know what one to two million dollars of startup fees and then just try to make something look a little bit scary and then just sell out to ebay for 50 million dollars now that they know that you know pop ebay is in the background like who who wants to protect their um, asset and I think if you look at a bunch of eBay's uh, acquisitions in the past uh, you have I think there was a couple uh, companies that they purchased or websites that uh, were kind of doing the same thing eBay did and they literally just discontinued it they purchased it and discontinued it just to like get it out of the way so I think you're gonna see some of that pop up in the next three to five years just other like clone TCG player clones just to um, create competition you know I think we're gonna definitely see some some of that but what I think uh the different theories I have right and I'm just a normal guy in a normal room not sure if these things are coming to light this is just me just theorizing different things of, of how things are gonna go down in the next year to two years um CFB I think it's gonna be gutted I think it's gonna be gutted like a fish and it's just the, that the assets that are in there are going to be taken out and then put into different entities, either TCG Player or eBay. Uh, and just the, the content arm of CFB is going to be like extremely light. I don't think that it's going to be um, around for a very long period of time. Just, just, just I, I just don't see like uh, a way forward for them. I think that this whole thing, especially what I said earlier is if there's another you know year where eBay is more profitable, like next year, if there's like a boom in the, the, the certain industries where eBay is profitable, they can just gut Channel Fireball and then just write it off as a loss. And you know that can help them with their tax burden as well from, from like my limited knowledge on all that shit. Um, I, I just don't see it doing anything. Uh, it's gonna have to do that or they're gonna have to like rebrand it and doing something else. I think distro distribution is, is definitely a good play for them. Um, if, if I was personally uh, eBay or whoever makes the decisions for CFB now, I would probably try to re-pivot CFB as a, a distribution type of thing and then also have it be event management, obviously. 
um, I, uh, with the content partnership. Uh, I think that would be a uh, kind of good play. It would be kind of weird to have like a content uh, type of arm also with a just um, distribution uh, network. But I think I think you could do something there. Uh, just, just my thoughts. Um, uh, but the one thing that I think that eBay is really like licking their chops at is the um, PCG card grading um, venture that um, the CFB was in. So from from what I read, and I don't know, and you can comment down below. I know CFB is partnered with uh, PCG, which I believe Matt Rogers um, is uh, head of the gr card grading company that you know does a lot of flesh and blood card grading, which is cool. And it does like robotic grading. I think eBay really wants to go hard in that because. I think in the past, I think it was last year, they started doing this thing where you could do eBay authentication, where you could pay a little bit of money and eBay authenticates the cards if you purchase from someone else just to make sure it's legit and they, they charge a fee. But I think that they have seen other card grading companies like out there, uh, like uh, you know Beckett and PwC, and a lot of consumers are pissed off at them right now because the amount of lead time it takes to get your fucking cards back and the amount of prices that they just, they jacked up their prices because they have huge volume. Like there, there is a big gap and opening for consumers to one another their card grading service and, and being a premier one. I think that if eBay says, hey, let's all market this um, let's say like PCG card grading uh, services is like the next big thing and, and kind of hype it up. Now you have three platforms plugging this, not just one. Keep that in note. Like in the past, you just had Channel Fireball hyping it up, but now you can have TCG Player hyping it up as well and eBay hyping it up and eBay's huge. So eBay can really use their brand and like brand awareness to really increase the value of that and to also get a shitload of revenue. I mean, card grading is is huge, man. A huge amount of profits, especially if you're making robots do it instead of people. You're going to have more accurate grading and, you know, more timely grading and just efficiency in the process. So I think that overall, I think that that is the big thing that they're going to do in the next year. I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know if they're going to buy PCG, uh, you know, the company. Uh, it sounds like it was a joint venture between CFB, uh, where they probably own like 40% or 45% uh, equity in, in the company. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen there, but I think, I think they're going to utilize that branch. They might even make CFB just, hey, you guys are now the card grading service, you know? You guys handle all, of, but I, I think that would be kind of odd. I, I don't know. I don't know where they're going with that, but I think that overall, I think if eBay looks at CFB, the biggest thing that really gets them aroused is this card grading service that they have a joint venture in. I think that that is really something that they will want to just throw unicorn money at and give them like, you know, $20 million to build like a huge warehouse to, you know, expand operations and making it a big thing and plugging it. I think that's that's the route they want to go. Now, a TCG player, I think they want to just do nothing. I, I don't think that they will want to do too much to the platform. Of course, maybe increase uh, fees slightly over the course of a, a period of time. I think Rudy said that. I, I don't want to steal anything he says, but I, I do agree with uh, that point. I watched his video on that on on this whole subject. Um, I could see that, um, but I know that they don't want to piss people off to where uh, new competitors come in. But honestly, I, I don't think they have to do anything. I mean. TCG, TCG player is already a well-oiled machine. They're just getting the sales and the revenue from it um, as like figures that they can use in their overall um, income statement. Uh, but a lot of it, you know, they, they do have a good amount of technology, I think, with their platforms. So I think that that's definitely something they'll utilize in their, their own store uh, or in their own like platforms in eBay. So I think that there's a lot of nice little like toys and trinkets that they can use in their normal course of business that they'll they'll try to like, you know, capture. But all in all, I, I really don't think that there's much to do with TCG Player. And I I think at the end of the day, if it's not broke, why fix it? I think that's the whole story with TCG Player. Whereas CFB, they're gonna be like, ooh, I think I, I, think I see a nice uh, card grading service in there. That's, that's, a hot, that's a hot ticket. I think they're gonna put some weight on that uh, and, and do something. They're either gonna gut it completely and, and take those little entities and you know match them out 
or they're gonna like refocus CFB into like maybe just content partnership or you know we'll see where um, that heads it but uh, yeah, man, that, that's my overall view on this whole situation. Appreciate you uh, listening to me rant about this whole topic. Um, overall, it's, it's just, it's really fascinating. And the market and the secondary market out there for trading card games overall will change because of this whole like acquisition chain that we have going on. Uh, there, this really does make it so <laughs> one large entity owns a really big market share out there in the trading card game space. It is it is wild, man. And yeah, it, it'll be cool to see what changes in the future. And hey, maybe maybe some money from a uh, big old eBay can really come in and, and make a difference in the trading card game industry and, and make things uh, interesting. But all in all, I don't think it's going to be very good, especially for local game stores, for consumers at all it's just not going to be a really good thing for the consumers out there and the people transacting because you really only have one place to go i mean even if you have like multiple different websites it's all run by the same shadow organization in the in the skies so it really is not beneficial uh to the consumers out there so yeah we'll, we'll see how it all transpires that is my information or just ideas and, and thoughts on the topic let me know what you think i'm really interested to hear uh, what other people have to say about this topic i've been watching a lot of youtube videos on this topic and just really really interesting takes overall on, on how it's all going to transpire and it's really impossible to tell the future but it's really interesting to guess and, and speculate on everything that's going to happen so cheers man have a good one